We can now start working on the end, so I will place the 3D cursor on the finger and add a circle and make sure it has 8 vertices, that's the right number to make it simple. I will also deactivate the snapping and try uh, to align it with the joint. I've just added a shrink wrap modifier and I will source our sculpt so that uh, the vertices will snap onto its surface. I can now click the vertices icon so that I can see the result while I'm in edit mode. I can now tweak the position rotating the circle so that I have the center vertices aligned with the finger. I duplicate this ring of vertices and align it with the next joint. I can switch on and off the shrink wrap modifier to see what I'm doing why I'm placing uh, the vertices properly. I can now duplicate another ring and place it on the root joint. I will re-enable the snapping tool and rework and refine the position of each vertices. I can now link the different loops by uh, pressing F uh, a couple of times. Then I will re-enable the shrink wrap modifier and start adding loop cuts. My golden rule will be to add a loop cut between each joint and add one supporting loop on each side of the joints. If you get weird uh, behavior, just check if the snapping tool is activated or not. Adding the supporting edge loop, I will try to make them wider on the top of the finger and tighten in the inside. I can now extrude new loops toward the tip of the finger at the loop cut. And now I will work on the joint. So what I do is that I remove the center vertices of the joint, select the edge loop that has been created, extrude it and scale it down. And it will create this isolation uh, face loop we have been working on uh, certain muscle and on the, the elbows, for example. I can now tweak my geometry and fill the gaps. Our character doesn't really have nails, he has kind of clothes that are extension of its finger. So I will extrude at the, um, those edge until the tip to define it and close it on the other side. And then I will see how I can uh, feel the top and the bottom part. On the top part, that's pretty simple. I'm just extruding the center vertex and I get a diamond shape on top of the claw. I will apply the shrink wrap modifier and add a new one so that it updates what I have done before. To get a better view, I will press Alt-B to isolate a part of the document, but the problem is that the snapping tool will consider uh, the mesh even if it's hidden, and when you move vertices, they may snap on other parts of the character as you've just seen. 
I can now extrude the last vertices trying to follow uh, the claw topology we have set and I will close my mesh. I can now duplicate the existing finger, place it on the next one and using the proportional editing tool uh, I will try to match the underlying geometry. Each time I reach a good step in my retopology I copy the shrink wrap modifier and apply the first one. I will use the same process to make the third finger and then I will start to join them. To link the finger I will select the middle vertices that are going on the inside of the finger and create a face with the next one and do the same on the other side. I will then add a loop cut between the finger and reproject everything and tweak the position. I do the same with the next finger making sure that uh, the center edge loop of my finger are correctly aligned that's why I'm tweaking those in this time lapse here I can now extrude all the boundary vertices we have created to create the first edge loop around the end toward the wrist I will extrude a second edge loop and once I'm done I will create a joint isolation as we did on top of our finger joints. So I will select those center vertices, remove them, select the edge loop, extrude and scale and then I will tweak the position of everything and finally fill the gap. I will then uh, create the sum with the exact same topology and method we have been using for the other fingers.
Now that the sum is done, I will select the inside edge loop on both the sum and the fingers just to identify them and connect them properly because I, I want those edge, uh, this edge flow uh, to continue over the sum. So I want to make sure that they will be connected. That's why I'm slightly tweaking the geometry here is to make these vertices uh, nicely align with the corresponding on the finger. So I will double check if my topology is right and make some tests just to be sure that I have this inner loop. So I've tried a uh, redirection, but it didn't work uh, that much. So I've kept the previous uh, topology. Then I will uh, rapidly make um, the top of the end and the inside of the end by extruding big chunks of vertices. Uh, I'm not for the time being considering the connection with the fingers. We'll do this a bit later. I just want to uh, fill the end with topology so that uh, we make it looks uh, quite finished. With some uh, loop cuts, I'm joining the top of the end with the fingers and we'll see later on how we can reduce the number of polygons adding some and creating some diamond shapes. As the inside of the end won't be deforming that much in this area, I'm trying to reduce the number of polygons flowing uh, toward the wrist. So I make some connection on the side loops. So we are now on the tricky part. I can't connect uh, the wrist on to the end because I have too much vertices. So what I will do is that I will remove some of them and try to check where I can create a diamond shape by merging some of the vertices together. So here I have a good candidate. I remove some of them and you see I create this uh, quad face with a diamond shape and it allow us to reduce uh, three polygons to one and make the connection. I can now fill the gaps here and I will repeat the process uh, between the two others finger. I still have a problem though. I'm missing a one edge loop on the wrist to be able to close the end and the mesh without having this ugly uh, triangle here. So I'm testing a different solution. I feel a bit lost for the time being. But what I will do is what I've told you before. Whenever you have a problem like this, 
I will check how the, the edge flow is and I will remove a face where I don't want uh, the, um, the loop cut to continue. So I remove this face, make my loop cut and I will now close the end and now from the elbow I can choose where I make my loop cut so I will make this so that it flows uh, on the shoulder and then on the neck and I can now change uh, the topology here so that it will be all quads and I will just have to smooth the neck area using the smooth tool and then reproject with a grab and face snapping <laughs>